Welcome to Small Arms Solutions. Today we're looking at a very interesting pistol. This is one from the past. Uh, this one was only in production from 1991 to 1998, the Browning BDM. Now the Browning BDM was basically a modernized version of the Browning High Power. The Browning High Power, which was introduced during World War, during World War II, served both Axis and Allies alike, been used by many militaries throughout the world. It was the first true Wonder 9 in the fact that it had a high capacity magazine, 13 rounds, 12, 13 rounds. Of course, now they hold 15. It was also very similar to the 1911 in the fact that it was single action only. So when you would fire, first shot would go off and you would go back into single action. And the only way to get the hammer forward is for you to ride it forward and put it on a, on a quarter cock. So this was, again, single action only. Um, this pistol has been in service from World War II still to this day. During, uh, during the time period of World War II, you also had the Walther P38, which also came out, and it had a couple other design features on it that, that combined with this would give us our M9 pistol. The P38 introduced the uh, slide-mounted safety with decocker, uh, double action, single action, uh, which was a incredible uh, update, giving a pistol the ability to be carried safely uh, with the hammer down, and to be able to decock it without the risk of uh, unintentional discharge. Well, Browning, uh, in probably uh, late 80s, decided they wanted to do an update and to make a modernized version of that pistol, which is what they did. And we have here is the Browning BDM, or Browning B is in uh, Browning dual mode. Basically, what we had here is a pistol that by the use of a lever, by use of a lever here, you can go to a pistol or a revolver mode. Pistol mode, very similar to whatever else we have here. We do have a decocking mechanism on here. So we could decock. We have a safety engaged right now, so nothing, won't, nothing the trigger won't move. We have a safety, manual safety. Then we flip up. Our first shot is going to be like a double action revolver. The long drawn double action pull. Then when the slide would come back, it would recock. You now would have a single action. So again, fire, single action. We now could decock, flip back up. Your first shot, double action, and single. So now we switch over to revolver. So, our first shot on double action, fire. Now our next shot's gonna be double action as well. So it can go either way. This pistol will be offered in several models. You had, again, a standard BDM, which was your ability to go from double action only to uh, semi-attic pistol mode. Then you would have the uh, the BPM, which would be the Browning pistol, uh, double action, single action only. BPMD, uh, pistol mode, double action, single action, decock. And the BRM, DAO only. So you would have this offered in uh, several different variations. What this also did was it gave you a 15-shot magazine versus the original 12. Double action. You also have, if you notice on here, you have a live cartridge indicator. If you look in this area right in here, you'll be able to see the brass that's on there. More modernized sights than you would see on a, on a standard Browning uh, high power. And the, the actual the feel of it remained the same. So again, to want to go back to uh, double action, or to go back to the pistol mode, you do have a tab on the back of the magazine that was supposed to be able to be used to rotate that. Uh, I tried that and the tab tended just to bend. Uh, it didn't do a very good job of this at all, so I ended up using a screwdriver to do this properly. But uh, this was your position right here. So taking a look at the pistol for disassembly, you can lock it open to the rear again. Lock to the rear, we have disassembling lateral release lever. You flip down, pull back pull forward. So very, very well machined. You can see your ejector on here. You can see very, very well made. Now taking a look at the slide, pull up on our recoil spring. We can pull that right out, pull the barrel right out. And also like an improvement over the original high power design, you have a firing pin safety. Again, the firing pin safety is the most important safety you can have on any kind of a military grade or any kind of a, a personal defense pistol. This enables you to have a manual safety that will not disengage unless the trigger is pulled all the way to the rear. The original Browning high power design did not have that. So basically if it was dropped, just the inertia could set the firing pin off by launching it forward. Uh, some, man some manufacturers have really heavily increased the weight of the uh, firing pin spring to try to mitigate that, but the reality is you still have the ability, if that was to drop hard enough, for that, for that firing pin just to go back enough and to go forward enough to set off that primer. With this, 
with the, without the trigger being pulled all the way to the rear, you could drop it, you could throw it, you can do whatever you want, and there's no way that it can fire. So again, this is the most important safety that you can have on any kind of a modern combat pistol. Again, your barrel's very similar to that of the original, similar locking system. Standard recoil spring, guide rod. Drop that right on like so. So again, this was an attempt to take an existing design and try to modernize it, which, you know, overall they, they did a decent design, but however, when you started comparing it to the Beretta M9 and the SIG and everything, I don't think it really held up uh, nearly to the standards that those did. You're again, you're looking at uh, a magazine capacity of 15 plus one, 15 plus one in, uh, in the chamber, which is the same as all the other Wonder 9s that were out there at the time. So the barrel you have is a 4.7 inch barrel, weight of 31 ounces. Again, we have the loaded chamber indicator on here. And you also can see on the other side, this is the, the dial here where you go from uh, pistol to revolver mode. Again, you're supposed to be able to use this tab on the magazine to be able to rotate that. It did not work for me. Uh, so I ended up using a screwdriver. So what I think we're gonna do now is we we'll take this out to range. We're gonna see how it shoots. Got a new kind of ammunition here. I'm giving a try. It's Callaway Ballistics. Uh, we haven't used this before, but we're going to see how it works. We have here the Browning Deep BDM or Browning Double Mode Pistol. We have here in the pistol setting. This is going to be double action, single action, like a standard pistol. We're going to fire one magazine with the standard pistol setting, and then we're going to go over to to the revolver setting, which is going to be double action only. First shot's double action, it's going to go into single. And now, we're going to switch to revolver mode, which is going to be double action only. Uh, overall, the pistol shot very, very well. Uh, there was, you know, what you would expect coming out of Browning. Um, this was just another neat pistol that just didn't, it just didn't last. It just uh, it never gained popularity with law enforcement or military. Um, I can't say for sure, but I am not aware of any law enforcement contracts or military contracts that this pistol ever saw. So I think that it basically stuck with uh, commercial use. I do want to thank one of our viewers for sending this to us. I do like to take a look at some of these older guns. Uh, that you don't really see too much of anymore. They pop up every once in a while uh, in gun shops and, and such. People don't know too much of what they are because nothing was really ever said about them. But uh, this is one that I can remember just being personally working in a gun shop in college uh, around you know 1994. 
and we had had one of the, we had one of these that was sitting in our shelf for a couple of years. Uh, we just couldn't we just couldn't get rid of it no matter how hard we tried. They were not inexpensive at the time either. I can't remember what the MSRP was back then, but uh, I know compared to most of the nine millimeters that we had, it was relatively high. But uh, you know, we never heard of any really really bad complaints with them. Um, but it just was never a military grade or a law enforcement grade pistol. It, it remained commercial grade, and it lasted a very short period of time. Uh, not much would be done with this uh, again until uh, FN came out with their newest version of the high power, which had some major modifications done to it, which was certainly several steps over uh, what this was. But again, this was an attempt uh, in modernizing an old design, uh, which I think that's probably what's hurt most of these companies was they would, you know, they would take a legacy design like so, uh, rather than start all over again to, to make a brand new pistol, they would take this and they would modify it to uh, to the newer the newer criteria. And sometimes it doesn't tend to work out that well. Sometimes this is designed to work as it is. When you wanted something to work with these newer uh, features, sometimes you just got to start from a clean sheet of paper um, and, and not and not stick with your, your legacy designs, which is what's hurt the American companies more than anything. The American companies, uh, at least in my opinion, you look at you know the XM9 program. If you look at what uh, most of the manufacturers uh, put into there, you know you look at Smith and Wesson put in their legacy, which which didn't fare very well at all. You know, uh, you look at uh, Ruger and all these other companies that did put into that. None of the American guns even even you know got, got to the final. The final you had was the Bride of the Sig. You look at the same thing with the XM17 program. The only two guns to 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 uh, to see through was was the Glock and was the Sig. All the American companies, which were basing on legacy designs for the most part, they failed. So it's generally the companies that are thinking out of the box and coming up with brand new designs, not just modification of old ones, that tend to uh, have the guns that that will work properly. But that's a whole other discussion for a whole other video. So again, we did enjoy this. Uh, we were shooting at our steel challenge targets. So are you guys interested in getting uh, any steel targets to shoot at? We do have a code over on the challenge targets, uh, SAS. You can save 10% on any of your steel targets that you would want. So we do hope you guys enjoy this video. If you do, please click like, please subscribe, and even better share.